Matthew 1, 18 through 25 says, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph was a just man. He respected the law, but he also didn't want to see bad things happen to Mary. While they were betrothed to be married, and it was technically legal, it was not finalized. They were not living together, and the marriage had not been consummated. That would have happened weeks or even years after the fact, depending on their arrangement. Since they had not reached the point of finalizing their marriage, Joseph knew that the child Mary was carrying could not have been his. The only other logical explanation that Joseph would have come up with was that she was pregnant by another man. Under the Mosaic law, Joseph could have made her a public spectacle. He could have had her humiliated and stoned and killed. But because he was a just man, he chose not to do that. Instead, he still had to have the betrothment legally terminated by way of a certificate of divorce. But he chose to do so quietly. He loved Mary. The Bible doesn't really say if he believed Mary about the Holy Spirit or if Mary ever even told him that. So we don't know for sure if he knew and if he did, if he believed what Mary had told him. They were believers in God and they knew the scriptures, so they likely would have known about the prophecies regarding the coming Savior. Regardless if Joseph knew or not, or if he believed her or not, he still chose to divorce her, but did so quietly. It could have been that he thought she was lying, or that he didn't know what she was told. Or it could have been that he just didn't think that he would have a part in the life and the story of Mary and Jesus. There's a good chance that Mary was in the lineage of Jesus, but the Bible never really makes that clear. It may seem that she needed to be in the lineage of David for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. But really, that wasn't necessary. Even though Joseph wasn't the natural father of Jesus, he still would have been the legal father of Jesus because he did marry Mary. It would have been like what we know today as adoption. When a parent adopts a child, it's like that child has been in that family all along. The parents take on guardianship and responsibility for that child. That is very important because Joseph did have a big part in the prophecy and the story of Jesus, more than what he probably even realized. Mary and Joseph were not perfect because, of course, they were human. But God chose them because he created them for this, and he knew their faith. 
When Joseph was visited by an angel who told him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife, he obeyed. When he heard from an angel that told him to take his family and flee to Egypt, he obeyed. When he again heard from the angel telling him to take his family back to Israel, then specifically back to Galilee, he obeyed. Jesus needed parents that were going to raise him in the faith. Jesus needed to be in the temple. He needed parents who were going to teach him. He needed parents who would be an example to him. We don't know much about Joseph other than the fact that he was Jewish, he was a just and obedient man, and he was a carpenter by trade. But just because Joseph is not talked about much, it in no way indicates that he was not an essential part of the life and story of Jesus. While the legacy of Mary has continued on, even in a way not really intended, Joseph was a very important choice also to be the earthly father of Jesus. It's easy to think that our part in life is insignificant. We might not think that we have much, if anything, to offer. We see other people, and we may think that that they are the ones being used by God, or or that they are more important than we are. We might see them as successful while we see ourselves as unsuccessful. But we have to remember that everyone has a part. God created each of us with a plan and a purpose. Some are extroverts and some are introverts. Some are front and center people while others are behind the scenes people. Some play music while others might teach. Some give while some are prayer warriors. Some serve and some are there to listen. Romans 12, 4 through 8 says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. It's not what position God has called you to that's important. It's that you do what God has called you to do. It's the attitude in which you do it. It's the reason that you do what you do. It's what you do with what you've been given. Colossians 3.17 tells us, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It is nearly impossible to live up to our own standards or to the standards that other people set against us. And it's impossible to live up to God's standards. But that's why we have a Savior in the first place. God has shown amazing grace toward us. We haven't earned it because we can't earn it. If God is willing to show so much grace, maybe it's time to show yourself some grace. You are not your neighbor. But always remember this. God has created you on purpose, for a purpose, for such a time as this.